It's a golden year and a golden day because Dawn French has joined us in the studio. Hello. Hello, how are you? It's lovely to hear you live on this network. Yes, I know. <laughs> you hear my voice here all the time. I know. I love it. I, I, th- I feel a little bit of... What's the right word? Just sort of, I feel like a patron. Ah, That's yes. What I feel like. Yeah, well, I just think it's your network, basically. <laughs> it, it's you, you own it and allow the rest of us to I occasionally have to appear. Say it very carefully, as I'm sure you can imagine. Greatest hits is something you could get very wrong. And but I'm, I don't get it wrong. You I say d- of it course, very carefully of course. every time. You don't get it wrong. I'd never <laughs> expect such a thing. The one thing we don't have you saying is golden years. Golden years. There we are. We've got it now. Got it we, now. we can use that for the, it forever. for the rest of time. Yeah. And we have your book right here yes. in front of us. It's uh, Dawn French. The uh, Well, it's not the twit files, but it's something quite close. It's like twit, the word, but it rhymes with fat. I, ex- yeah. I think we get it yeah. now. And uh, why that title? Is it, it's because you were, you behaved in that fashion all I your think life, you think? I, you know, when I was reflecting on my life and certainly my work life, I realised that mostly I've made mistakes. Um, and I'm sort of like one big floor wrapped in flesh. That's who I actually am. <laughs> and I, and I, every time I've made a mistake, that has been the tinging moment that I've learned something good or that I've learned something about myself or I've had a good laugh. And actually, I'm all in favour. I'm a big advocate of the sort of anti-perfection league, let's put it that way. I, I, I realise that not only is it not possible to be perfect, it's not even desirable. No. So, I, you know, I'm 66 today, as it happens, and I just think, well, I'm going to own all these mistakes. And I can't tell you, I took, you know, I'm on tour with this show um, at the same time, because some of the stories that are in the book are some of the stories I tell on stage, but more besides in the book, because obviously there's more room to tell more stories in the book. Um, but the more I tell these stories on stage, the more I feel I connect with yeah. an audience because you know and I know that you love your friends when they own up to stupid faux pas. It's it's funny, it makes you connect with them, it makes you love them and it makes you open up about your own stuff. Yeah. So, you know, that is much better to me than all of us trying to pretend to be successful all the time. And as you say, you learn from mistakes. You do, and yeah. they're funny. Yeah. You know, and not, silly. Not at the time, necessarily. Not at the but... time, they're fairly <laughs> humiliating at the time. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't hurt to feel that shame. But funnily enough, if you can own it and wear your mistakes like a lovely shiny medal, the shame of them just d- dissipates. It just goes. It's very liberating. And are all the uh, the occasions where you made a mistake in this book? And are Not they all... all of them, no, because no. honestly, it's a lifetime of it. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> it's pretty, a tsunami of it's mistakes. It's a pretty big book already. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And are they all they are 100%? Yes, they yeah. are all exactly things that have happened to me, things that I have said, things that I have done. I have been a remarkable idiot for a lot of my life. And, you know, they might be things that in the past I would be embarrassed to tell people about because we are embarrassed about mistakes but I think in the minute I don't know the minute I got into my 60s I thought yeah. why am I embarrassed about anything there's yeah. nothing to be embarrassed about at all it's good fun age comes as a kind of uh, inoculation against embarrassment doesn't it 100% you just, yeah. yes you, you don't care no you don't <laughs> care and what's more there's delight in it and who doesn't want that yeah now let's think of a particular part of your past. 1980 is yes. the golden year that you have chosen. Yes. Why that year? Because that was the year that I left college. Um, and I had been at Central School of Screech and Trauma, as we call it, <laughs> uh, where I met Jennifer uh, since 1977. And we left in 80. So 80 was a real turning point for me of making all kinds of decisions. It was a year that, because I had intended to be a teacher and I had a teaching job to go to in 1980, but um, part way through that teaching job, uh, the comic strip was formed. And so I was moonlighting as a performer at night. And then there was a big decision where the whole of the comic strip gang, which is, you know, Aid and Rick and Nigel and Pete and Lexi and Jennifer and myself, had the chance to go to the Adelaide Festival and perform there, but I couldn't go because I was a teacher, so I had to resign from teaching, and it was a big deal for me yeah. to leave teaching, which I thought would be my forever job. I thought the comedy was just a silly, good, fun thing I did at night occasionally for a fiver in the back pocket kind of thing. But, um, but you know, that was a big year for me, 1980. Right, and the first song you've chosen from that year is Madness. Yeah. Why that one? Oh, just because of the unadulterated joy of baggy trousers. It was just that two-tone 
thing, Suggs and all of it, it was just... Uh, the minute it came on, I would have to dance immediately. Good jolly old song that you. I, I, yeah. I can just sort of imagine you and yeah. Jennifer, perhaps. Doing, have you? You've always been friends, Jennifer and you. Yeah, well, you know, when we first met, we weren't actually because um, I came to college a little bit late. My dad had just died, and so I was very sad actually. Uh, but you know, I was turning up to meet this whole new gang of people, so pretending not to be sad. Um, and she was, she was there. I remember the first time I met her we were all in leotards because you know drama school does that too it sort of humiliates you um it's a very leveling thing um and I remember seeing her and thinking she's very beautiful she's posh this is a sort of out of my league and not my type of person at all I've got a bit of a prejudice against posh people I still have it to this day they sort of have to prove themselves to me, to me a bit um and I thought mm, she's not no I, that's not the girl for me um and then very soon after, I needed a flat to live in. She needed a flat to live in. We had a mutual friend who offered us a flat, so we were going to be living together. And I remember thinking, oh, I really want that flat. It was in Chalk Farm. It's quite a posh flat, um, really good flat. And I thought, really want it, but she's going to be there. Damn. Um, so I had to share with her. And, of course, the minute we were sharing a flat, that we just fell in love. And to realise how funny she is, and I realised how ridiculous these prejudices are to carry around. It's yeah. wrong. Indeed. Well said. Stevie Wonder, next choice. So what is it about Stevie? Oh, everything about Stevie Wonder. I, there's something about... Oh, uh, Stevie Wonder speaks to, to childhood, to my teenagehood, to my adulthood, to songs like this lately, which are, you know, a little bit sad. Songs of delight in children, you know, songs of the summer... Just sunshine and what a talent. Dawn French choosing her golden years. Could you just say it once more for us in case? Golden years. That's the, that's the one for me. That's <laughs> it. Thank you. We'll be using that one. <laughs> and, uh, we are about to come on to your uh, last choice, which will be the police. So uh, tell us about that and then we'll find out about all that you're doing. Well, the police now, I, you know, was a big fan of, of uh, the police as a band, but especially, of course, of Sting, who I thought, I think that was a bit of a crush mm -hmm. that I had on Sting and who didn't have a crush on Sting. He was a bit sort of unattainable and beautiful, wasn't he? Uh, but that band altogether, I just thought were a bit renegade and um, just, again, always danced whenever police music came on. Right. Well, you can dance again when this starts in a moment or two. Uh, it's uh, Dawn French's latest book, The Twit Files, we are saying at the moment, but uh, it's, it's there for us all. And Dawn, lovely to see you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.